Welcome to a new episode from English Plus Podcast. Today's episode is about mythology, myths and legends, and we will talk specifically about Chinese mythology. We will talk about Chinese mythology in context. We will talk about major deities and characters. We will talk about the key themes and symbols in Chinese mythology. And finally, we will talk about Chinese mythology in art, literature, and everyday life. So without further ado, let's start talking about Chinese mythology in this new Myths and Legends episode from English Plus Podcast. The people of China have a rich and complicated mythology that dates back nearly 4,000 years. Throughout Chinese history, myth and reality have been intertwined. Historical figures have been worshipped as gods, and ancient myths are sometimes treated as historical truths. In addition, three great religious traditions, Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism, have played a role in shaping the mythology. The result is a rich tapestry of characters and tales, both real and imagined, and a unique pantheon, a collection of recognized gods and goddesses organized very much like ancient Chinese society. China can trace its historical roots in an unbroken line for more than 4,000 years, and its mythological roots extend even farther back in time. From about 2000 to 1500 BCE, a people known as the Xia dominated the northern regions of China. The Xia worshipped the snake, a creature that appears in some of the oldest Chinese myths. Eventually, the snake changed into the dragon, which became one of the most enduring symbols of Chinese culture and mythology. From about 1500 to 1066 BCE, China was ruled by the Shang dynasty. The people at this time worshipped many deities, including natural forces and elements such as rain, clouds, rivers, mountains, the sun, the moon, and the earth. Their greatest deity, Shang Di, remains an important god in the Chinese pantheon. When a new dynasty, the Zhao, came to power in China in 1066 BCE, significant changes took place in religion. People still worship the old gods, but ancestor worship became increasingly important. Confucianism and Taoism appeared near the end of the Zhao dynasty. These two religious traditions had an enormous influence on the development of the most basic and lasting principles of Chinese culture. In 213 BCE, many of the original sources of the Chinese mythology were lost when Emperor Shi Huangdi of the Qin dynasty ordered the burning of all books on subjects other than medicine, prophecy, and farming. This order was reversed in 191 BCE and much of the literature was reconstructed, but works were written to support ideas popular with the royal court at the time. These changes affected religious beliefs, producing a pantheon of deities that mirrored the political organization of the Chinese empire. Gods and spirits had different ranks and areas of responsibility, just like Chinese officials. Shortly before 100 CE, Buddhism arrived in China from India and added another important influence to Chinese culture and mythology. Buddhist ideas gradually came to be merged with Taoism and Confucianism in the minds of many Chinese. The three traditions often were seen as different aspects of the same religion and as having basically the same gods. Buddhists and Taoists honored each other's deities in their temples, and both incorporated principles of Confucianism, such as ancestor worship, in their beliefs. Now let's talk about the core deities and characters in Chinese mythology. The deities and characters that make up the body of Chinese mythology originate in many different regions and from several unique belief systems. For this reason, Chinese mythology is less uniform and consistent in its legends than the mythologies of many other cultures, but offers a wide range of tales and mythological figures to appreciate. Pangu was the first living creature and the creator of the world. Among his acts of creation were the separation of the earth and sky, the placement of the stars and planets in the heavens, and the shaping of the earth's surface. It is often said that his body became the world on which all things live. 
For the Han people of ancient China, the supreme god was known as Shangdi. In later times, this same deity came to be known as Tian, also used as a word for heaven or sky. There are few details about Shangdi in Chinese mythology other than that he was male and his duties involved rewarding those who were deserving and punishing those who were not. Shangdi was not represented in art. A similar deity is the Jade Emperor, also known as Yu Huang, revered by Taoists as the supreme ruler of heaven. According to legend, when Yu Huang was born as a prince, the kingdom where he lived was flooded with light. As he grew, he showed a remarkable respect for all living things and devoted himself to helping the least fortunate members of the kingdom. After his father died, he ruled the region with greatness and eventually became immortal. According to myth, it took Yu Huang millions of years to achieve the status of Jade Emperor, which was bestowed upon him by a group of deities. Two groups of characters central to Chinese mythology are the Three Sovereigns and the Five Emperors. All of these figures were believed to rule ancient regions of China, and many are credited with uplifting humans to a state of advanced civilization through their leadership or their teachings. The three sovereigns are figures of the most ancient times. Two of the three, Fuji and Nuwa, were deities who helped humankind continue in the aftermath of a great flood. Fuji and Nuwa were brother and sister and were the only two to survive the flood. They prayed to the Jade Emperor who gave them permission to become a couple and repopulate the land. In many versions of their tale, they also teach humans essential skills, such as hunting, fishing with nets, and cooking food. The third of the three sovereigns, Shinong, is said to have taught people the arts of agriculture and medicinal herbs. According to legend, Shinong went to the trouble of tasting hundreds of plants and minerals in an effort to determine which could be helpful to humans and which could be harmful or even poisonous. The five emperors are believed to be based on historical leaders who brought great advancements to their people. None were emperors in the traditional, later use of the term, rather they were tribal leaders who may have also been elected to be in charge of a larger group of tribes. The first of the five emperors was the Yellow Emperor, also known as Huangdi. The Yellow Emperor was said to be the first to institute laws among the tribes he ruled and he also brought the first music and art to his people. He became immortal and eventually power passed to his grandson, Zhuangzu. Zhuangzu made his own contributions to Chinese culture, expanding his kingdom and unifying religions and marriage practices for all his subjects. The kingdom was later ruled by his son Ku and by Ku's son Yao. It is believed that Ku ruled for 70 years, while his son Yao ruled for over 100 years. Yao, according to tradition, invented the Chinese board game Go, which was considered an essential way to learn strategy and planning. The last of the five emperors was Shun, son-in-law to Yao and ruler for nearly 50 years. He was originally a simple farmer, but his humility and dedication to religion won him a reputation that spread all the way to Yao's throne. Since Yao was dissatisfied with his own son's behavior, he allowed Shun to marry two of his daughters and become the next in line to rule. Yao and Shun are often viewed together as the perfect leaders whose behavior rose above any possible hint of misdeed and whose popularity has been unmatched since. Other important figures from Chinese history have developed their own unique legends that expand upon their true historical accomplishments. Two of the most important of these figures are the religious and philosophical leaders Confucius and Laozi. Born in 551 BCE to a poor family of aristocratic background, Confucius began a teaching career after working as a minor government official. For Confucius, the goal of education and learning was self-knowledge and self-improvement, which would lead one to right conduct. Although his method of education was aimed at ensuring the smooth operation of a stable and well-ordered state, his teachings became a guide to living wisely as well. Confucius attracted many followers who spread his ideas after his death in 479 BCE. 
A number of legends grew up about Confucius, including one in which dragons guarded his mother when he was born. According to another story, a unicorn appeared at his birth and spit out a piece of jade with a prophecy written on it, saying that the infant would become an uncrowned emperor. Considering the immense impact of Confucius on Chinese culture, the prophecy came true. Taoism, also known as Taoism, arose about the same time as Confucianism. This religious tradition had its roots in the nature of worship of the earliest Chinese people. The word Tao means way, and Taoist belief is based on the idea that there is a natural order or a way of heaven that one can come to know by living in harmony with nature. Through an understanding of natural laws, an individual can gain eternal life. The main Taoist work, the Tao Te Ching, was supposedly written by Laozi a scholar at the Chinese royal court in the 1500s BCE. Little is known about Laozi. The main sources of information written hundreds of years after he lived are legendary in nature. One of the most popular stories about Laozi concerns a voyage to the West, during which he wrote the Tao Te Ching. Other tales claim that Laozi met Confucius and that he lived more than 200 years. Although the true story of Laozi will probably never be known, he is widely respected in China. Confucianists consider him a great philosopher, while Taoists regard him as the embodiment of the Tao and honor him as a saint or god. Now let's talk about some major myths in Chinese mythology. According to Chinese mythology, at the beginning of time, the universe consisted only of a giant egg. Within the egg lay a sleeping giant named Pangu. One day, Pangu awoke and stretched, causing the egg to split open. After Pangu emerged, the light, pure parts of the egg became the sky, while the heavy parts formed the earth. This separation of the earth and sky marked the beginning of yin and yang, the two opposing forces of the universe. Already gigantic in size, Pangu grew 10 feet taller each day. This went on for 18,000 years, and as Pangu became taller, he pushed the earth and sky farther apart and shaped them with his tools until they reached their present position and appearance. Exhausted by his work, Pangu finally fell asleep and died. When Pangu died, parts of his body were transformed into different features of the world. According to some stories, his head, arms, feet, and stomach became great mountains that helped to anchor the world and mark its boundaries. Other stories say that Pangu's breath was transformed into wind and clouds. His voice became thunder and his eyes became the sun and moon. Pangu's blood formed rivers and seas. His veins turned into roads and paths. His sweat became rain and dew. His bones and teeth turned into rock and metal. His flesh changed into soil. The hair on his head became the stars and the hair on his body turned into vegetation. Some myths say that humans developed from fleas and parasites that fell from Pangu's body and beard. Other stories, however, tell how Pangu created humans by shaping them from clay and leaving them in the sun to dry. When a sudden rain began to fall, Pangu hastily wrapped up the clay figures, damaging some in the process, which explains why some humans are crippled or disabled. Another myth tells of the battle between two gods. Zhu Rong was the god of fire, while his son Gong Gong was a god of water. The ambitious young Gong Gong decided to attempt an overthrow of heaven so that he could be the ruler of all things. When Zhu Rong heard this, he battled his son for several days to stop him. The two fell down to earth during the fight, and ultimately, Zhu Rong was triumphant over his son. However, Gong Gong was so upset that he smashed one of the mountains that held up the heavens. This is why the sun, the moon, and the stars travel through the sky at an angle. Another popular myth concerns the daughter of the Jade Emperor, a princess who was responsible for weaving the clouds in the sky. She had a magic robe that allowed her to descend to the land of mortals, earth, in order to bathe each day. On one occasion, a poor cowherd saw her bathing in a stream and fell in love with her. While she was in the water, he took her robe. This kept her from being able to return to the heavens. Trapped with the cowherd, the princess eventually came to love him, and the couple got married. 
Later, when the princess was feeling homesick and missing her father, she discovered the magic robe that her husband had hidden from her. She used the robe to travel back to the heavens, and her father, not wanting her to return to earth, created an enormous river across the sky that the princess could not cross. The river is visible in the night sky as the Milky Way. Seeing how upset his daughter became, however, the Jade Emperor decided to allow the couple to meet on a bridge over the river for one day each year. In one version of the tale, the bridge is made of magpies, birds who have taken pity on the couple. A famous literary work that incorporates many elements of Chinese folklore, including animals as main characters, is the 16th century novel Journey to the West. The novel tells the story of a famous Buddhist monk named Zhuangzang who travels west on a journey to India, where he is tasked with obtaining some sacred Buddhist scriptures. Along the way, he encounters several unique characters who join him on his quest, including Sun Wukong, the monkey king who had been punished by Buddha centuries before when he attempted to take control of heaven. Zhuangzang is able to control Sun Wukong's violent outbursts by uttering some magic words. Another companion, the half-human, half-pig Zubaji, was also punished by the gods for his disrespectful behavior. Zhuangzang is also joined by a demon named Sha Wujing, a former general in heaven who was punished for breaking a valuable crystal vessel. The group encounters 81 different disasters that they must overcome mostly orchestrated by Buddha himself as a test for the adventurers. What begins as a search for scriptures turns out to be a quest for salvation. Zhuangzang and Sun Wukong both achieve the highest level of enlightenment, while the other characters earn the ability to return to heaven. Now let's talk about some key themes and symbols from Chinese mythology. And I know this Myths and Legends episode is a little longer than others, but trust me, I'm just scratching the surface because talking about Chinese mythology can go on and on for a long time. Now let's talk about some key themes and symbols from Chinese mythology. Several common themes appear throughout much of Chinese mythology. Among the most significant are the creation of the world out of chaos or disorder, the importance of nature and reverence for ancestors. The importance of nature is stressed in legend, such as that of the five sacred mountains that represent the main points of the compass and the axis of the world. The most sacred mountain, Tai Shan, has Shang Di, the greatest earthly power, as its deity. Mount Kanlan, home of immortals, became the focus of various cults. Many Chinese myths deal with natural disasters, especially floods. Others deal with heavenly bodies such as the sun and moon. Animals, including dragons, pigs, and monkeys, are also important figures in Chinese mythology. Reverence for ancestors is another common theme in Chinese mythology. Long life is viewed as a sign of the gods' favor, and for many centuries the Chinese have sought the secret of long life and immortality. In the past, Taoists believed that magic potions could be created that bestowed eternal life on people who drank them and that beings known as Cyan gained immortality in this way. Age is also closely associated with wisdom and enlightenment in many myths. Both Taoism and Confucianism stress the importance of paying proper respect to elders, especially parents and grandparents and deceased ancestors are honored with various ceremonies and rituals. Now finally, let's talk about Chinese mythology in art, literature, and everyday life. Mythology has been one of the richest sources for Chinese artists and writers to draw upon over for centuries. Journey to the West is considered to be one of the most important books in Chinese history, and traditional artwork commonly features legendary figures such as the Five Emperors or the Eight Immortals. In modern times, even with the increasing presence of Western cultural traditions, Chinese mythology remains an integral part of life and art in China. Journey to the West has appeared in many forms and remains the best-known tale of Chinese mythology to those outside China. The Japanese television series Monkey, which also aired in a translated version for British and Australian audiences, was based on the book and the 2008 English-language film The Forbidden Kingdom. Starring Chinese cinema legends Jackie Chan and Jet Li, was inspired by the same legendary characters. Other mythological characters also appear in different aspects of art and culture. 
Pangu is usually portrayed as a little person clothed in a bearskin or leaves, holding a hammer and chisel or the egg of creation. Fuji and Nuwa are sometimes depicted in half-human, half-snake form. The two have appeared in several video games, including the popular Dynasty Warriors series. In modern times, Shangdi is one name given to God among Chinese Christians. As interest in Asian culture expands throughout the Western world, characters such as these and the tales that accompany them will no doubt continue to grow in awareness and popularity. And with that, we come to the end of this episode. As I told you, I just scratched the surface. Chinese mythology is so deep and profound and and rich in details and characters and stories, which we cannot obviously cover in just one episode. But this is just an introduction for you. If you're interested, you can go and read more about Chinese literature. Trust me, you will find a lot of great stories, great wisdom in Chinese mythology. And maybe I will create a mini-series about Chinese mythology in the days to come. But with that being said, let me remind you that you can find the transcript of the episode on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com, in a custom post created for this episode. But this is not everything, of course. On our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com, you will find a lot of other things that will help you improve your English and learn about a lot of things, not only about English. And of course, for our premium members, there are premium episodes, and very soon there will be premium courses The writing workshop is going to be a very important course where you're going to have personalized feedback on your writing. And we also have the book club that is launching very soon and other online courses that I will keep as a surprise for you. Now, to become premium members, you have to become a patron of English Plus on Patreon, and then you will have access to all premium content on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. And you can find the link as well in the description Go to our Patreon page and become a patron of English Plus. Of course, you will support us and we will definitely appreciate that. But you will also have access to some great content coming your way very soon, besides the premium episodes that we add all the time. Now, with that being said, this is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.